connection number three. We put the spotlight on channeling high frequency sound waves to a single pair of unsuspecting ears. Dr. Joe Pompey is an unassuming MIT grad with the powers of a superhero. He can whisper directly into the ears of patrons at the local library from way up in the balcony. Okay, let's try the guy with the green jacket. Hey. Hey, you. Just be aware that we're keeping an eye on you. So you better cut it out. Pompey achieves this seemingly superhuman feat with a gizmo he invented called the Audio Spotlight. It's a speaker that focuses sound at a specific target. Pompey was your average teenager always tweaking his stereo equipment, but with a twist. He had a gift for engineering and design. He made an incredible scientific breakthrough that began when he was working a summer job at an audio company. I started to become interested in really what the shortcomings of traditional loudspeakers were. He realized that regular loudspeakers can't create directional sound. A loudspeaker is like the light bulb. The sound that's created really goes everywhere. The young engineer wanted to direct sound, just like a laser pointer that you confuse cats with. He figured out that mathematically there are only two options to make speakers act like lasers. Use gigantic speakers or only broadcast high frequency audio waves. The reason lies in the way audio waves travel through the air. Low frequency audio waves, like bass sounds, have more time to spread out over a larger area as they travel. Short high frequency waves reach their targets faster. So to get a speaker to beam its sound across the room, you can only use high frequency sound. In order to create a sound source that's directional, either you need to limit it only to extremely high frequencies, or you need to have a loudspeaker that's tens of meters across. When you create a speaker that big, certainly the beam is that big. So it doesn't do very well when you want to target one person or one small area. It seemed that Pompey's project was doomed. It's very rare in science to get to a stopping point where you realize that according to the math and according to all known theory, something's just not possible. Undaunted, Pompey's persistence resonated with the media lab of MIT. They accepted him into their doctoral program and directed him toward an exciting new possibility, using ultrasound waves to create his audio beam. Ultrasound waves are even shorter than Howard Stapleton's high-frequency audio in Connection 2. They're so fast and small that no one, not even a teenager, could hear them. And their tiny, quick nature also makes them highly directional. If Pompey could convert ultrasound into audible sound, he'd be able to direct it like a laser beam. Several sleepless nights later, he finally made the math work. Here's his theory. Air is always moving, even in a still room. These air currents deflect sound waves as they travel. Mathematically, there was a way to accurately predict how these air currents would strike the ultrasound waves and convert them into frequencies we can actually hear. Since the ultrasound waves are highly directional, the resulting aim of the audible sound was perfect. The possibilities of this device were endless. One of the fun things we used to do was get up on the balcony five stories up in our laboratory building and aim the sound down at people walking below. Sometimes we'd beam smashing glass sounds at the caterers walking by with dishes, or we'd whisper in people's ears, and uh, it was all great fun. Now the owner of a small company selling his invention, Dr. Pompey has grown up some and adopted a more serious tone. Well, most of the time. Okay, I think I'll try hitting the girl with the green. Hey, you. We saw what you did yesterday. Directional sound earned Pompey a Young Innovator Award and the ear of many prominent inventors. 